Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Wednesday, the 5th of October, 2022. Can you hear me now? As the commercial said from a popular uh, wireless company, hopefully the audio issues are fixed today. It's just weird how that'll happen randomly sometimes. Nevertheless, here we are. It's the 5th of October. Time for the in-depth version of my discussion product that I put out. And we're mainly going to focus here on 91L down in the Southern Caribbean. It's going to take the Southern route. Kind of reminds me of Bonnie many, many weeks ago that took a long time to develop and it eventually did so near Central America and then it actually went into the Pacific and had a pretty long life in the Eastern Pacific. So a similar setup to Bonnie, but I think this is going to be more impactful for our friends in Central America. It has been impactful today for our friends down in the Southeast Caribbean, the Windward Islands specifically. So we'll take a look at all of that and more in today's update. National Hurricane Center, a good starting point. Here's 91L. Lots of info on it. Basically, this looks like it will go on to develop. And we'll take a look at this closer as we move forward. TD12 out here. Not having a good time of it in the eastern Atlantic as hostile conditions are whipping up on this system pretty good. Uh, it might still try to develop a little bit if the shear relaxes, but I don't think it's going to do too much more than it's already done. In the east pack, here is pain on its way out, so to speak, so that will be that. So let's look at things from the satellite perspective. This is still our ghost of Ian. Can you believe that? The surface energy up there, at least the pressure gradient has relaxed some, so the winds are not quite as fierce along the coastline, but that is the remnant circulation, the remnant leftovers, it is, of Ian up there off the mid-Atlantic states. Eventually it'll just move on out and then we can finally say goodbye forever and ever because the name Ian certainly will be retired from the list of names. Another eye storm, imagine that. But there it is up there still spinning around even a week after making that unbelievable landfall in Florida. So what else is happening? Well, we've got 91L down here, and then somewhere in this mess of clouds is TD number 12, the rest of the Caribbean and the Gulf and the Atlantic nice and quiet generally speaking uh, there's a little bit of dust down here enough so that our friend Brent down in the Virgin Islands chimed in sending me a text message that hey got a little bit of sal out here today it's pretty thick so yes even in October you can get some Saharan air that comes out look you can even see it in the early parts of the frames here Saharan dust coming off Africa there pretty constant thing that comes and goes ebbs and flows all right uh, looking at the close-up satellite animation here, this true color, as we like to call it here from Tropical Tidbits, something very interesting. Look at that ring right there, that arc cloud, whatever you want to call it. That's cool. I mean, that is really neat to see. What does it mean? Well, that is air that is going down and out. It is divergent at the surface. So earlier, you had some deep thunderstorms. They went up. That is the convergence and then the convection. And then they collapsed for whatever reason, and that air all went down and spread out. And you get that nice arc cloud or outflow boundary, and that is a sign that it's not very healthy. You need the air coming in at all angles as fast and as efficient as possible to get a tropical system to do what they do. Now, it's going to get there eventually, this 91L will, but it's just not doing it in a big hurry today. Nevertheless, deep convection right over Trinidad and Tobago and some of the islands nearby, including these aren't islands. This is part of the landmass down here of South America. And that is bringing some flooding rain, has brought some flooding rain. I want to show you a video that was sent in to me earlier today uh, from Darren. I appreciate it down there. There's quite a few pics and videos, but I wanted to show you this. These are the impacts. This is real. This is from today down in that region. And that's what happens. Too much rainfall, too short amount of time, and you get these impacts. Yep, that's, 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 there you go. I mean, I can't, seeing is believing, right? I say it, I say it, I say it over and over. We need to focus on impacts. And I know they say, well, they're down in the tropics. That's expected. What did you think was going to happen? It's still unpleasant for people, and it can still cause problems. And, you know, people could get swept away, can cause death and destruction and long-term misery even from an invest. This is not a big news-making hurricane, and that is a case in point. I appreciate uh, that user submission, so to speak, 
uh, Darren sending that to me via email. Very helpful. All right, the vorticity signature of our various features. Again, there's the ghost of Ian. Unbelievable, still up there. And then here is 91L, part of it sitting over South America even. And then here's the Vortmax, or whatever you want to call it. The thumbprint, the, the uh, whatever, that's it. That's the signature of TD12. And here's Payne over here in the East Pack. Starting to thin things out down here. We're not seeing nearly as much in the way of these concentrated areas. We're going to see more and more in the high and mid latitudes up here as we transition through fall and into winter. But we're not there yet. We'll still be watching for these concentrated areas from time to time to see if something brews up. So let's look at the dashboard here over at the Tropical Tidbit site under the storm or current storms menu item there. Um, this is one of the close-ups you can do on the satellite. This is a current forecast, um, or not forecast, what do you call this? It's like a real-time surface plot, not a forecast, but this is the forecast I want to show you. Talked about this more than I've ever had during Ian, because it kind of just dawned on me. Remember, you know, many, many days ago, all of the concern and all of the angst, people watching the Euro, watching the GFS, watching the HMON and the GF, well, uh, what's well, not the GFDL that became the HMON, the HWARF, there you go, the Canadian, the ICON, the whatever. Models, models, models. Well, again, the tools are there now that you can get a good consensus. The computers do all the crunching, and there's a great product for that called the TVCN. Sometimes you get the TVCX or the TVCA. Bottom line is those TVC models, especially the TVCN, and they get mentioned in the discussions from the National Hurricane Center. That's your consensus. That boils it down for you, and that's it right there. Now, it's cool because here, in at least this situation, from a science perspective, it's a tight cluster of models overall. There's not a big spread. So the consensus is pretty much right down the middle, which is very expected when you have an overall agreement in the overall model package like we see here. Um, and so that is the consensus there that this will head towards Nicaragua, and that's the landfall at least in just a few days. But the impacts will spread inland from there, of course. Nicaragua, Honduras, and to Guatemala, maybe parts of Belize, especially if this were to gain latitude earlier. Still five days out, plus we'll see. It could also, as the Euro shows, I'll show you that in a moment on the operational, it could dive more southwest. But I think our friends in Nicaragua are going to be in for it, unfortunately. And the consensus is good, except when it's aimed at you, right? Right. All right, so a couple of things here. We're going to look at the Euro here. This is the 12Z from today, and uh, this is the full one where you get every three hours. It's really nice. I like that. Um, so we'll look at the 10-meter wind and the mean sea level pressure, and you can see our feature. I'll point it out just in case you don't notice it. There it is down there as we start things out. And let's just go through hour by hour here, or every three hours as it were. There's two days out, and it does go through, by the way, the system as a whole through the ABC Islands. And I can't remember the person's name. I think it was on YouTube. They asked me something like, oh, great, you know, uh, more impacts or something like that. I'm paraphrasing for me in Aruba. And I was like, well, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. And so today, as the environment shows us and the modeling is showing us, yes, there will be impacts for Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, um, and even the north coast of South America, the continent itself, Venezuela. I mean, you got to watch this because flooding rain, I'm telling you. you know, wow, it's only 1,006 pressure. What's the big deal? Do I, do I need to show you the video from uh, Trinidad? I think is where it was from, from Darren. Again, rain is an impact, and especially if there's too much of it. So, yes, you folks down in the ABC Islands, I've never been there, but it's beautiful, I hear. Lots of friends and colleagues of mine have been there. And you guys are going to have to deal with this as it develops and it goes through. So squally conditions, gusty winds, locally rough seas, the very heavy rain, and then this system takes shape, finally starts to strengthen in the Euro here, and it dives to the southwest there, go back a little bit. You can see it making that turn back to the southwest some, and it intensifies as it heads towards land. I believe, just from experience and the way the environment is down here, that it'll be a lot stronger than the mid-990s or low-990s or whatever. 
I think this will be a hurricane as it heads towards Nicaragua. It fits the pattern. It's the overall climatological setup. And everything has typically these last few weeks overachieved beyond what the models have shown. Ian, a very big case in point, the upper, upper, uh, I can talk, the upper ocean heat content down here, uh, fairly high. It's not the highest, but certainly can support a hurricane. So anybody watching from Bluefields, Nicaragua, either side of that by a couple hundred miles, um, you got about less than five days, it looks like, and this is going to be knocking on your door down there. So again, why won't this turn north? Not that anybody wants it into the Gulf of Mexico. Why isn't that going to happen? Put a big question mark there. Well, as I showed you the other day, the answer is the mid-levels of the atmosphere. That's our key here. And let's take this to 48 hours. Uh, go backwards there. Hold on, wrong way. Mark, wake up. 48 hours there in the upper dynamics. Again, the anomaly is very helpful. The height anomaly is at 500 millibars up. And there it is. It's still there. Just enough ridging, the air is thick enough there. The high pressure and the mid-level ridge, as we call it, our storm would be sitting down here, and it simply cannot bump into that. This is like a big wall, a big thick area of atmosphere in the way, a large mountain of air, whatever you want to call it, and that stays prevalent even as the system develops, and that does stick into the Caribbean, or parts of the Caribbean, and certainly across the Gulf over the next few days, not allowing what would be Julia, that would be the name on this, if, unless 12 gets there first, which I doubt it, TD12. But you see, that ridge stays and it even grows a little bit to the point where you close off a 591 height line way out at about day six or so. So that's great for Florida. It'll dry out down there, probably heat things up a little bit if you like that. Hopefully everybody's power will be back on by then. But that is not a sign that hurricanes are going to come through and get into the Gulf. Can't happen. It's physically impossible with that kind of a setup. So there's some good news for you. All right. Our friends over at Storm2K uh, often talk about the future and uh, just keep their logo present there. It's an old message board. Been around a long time. I like to go in and see what people are talking about. You get a consensus over there. Uh, if a lot of people are saying the same thing, there might be disagreements. Well, I'm seeing this, but I'm not seeing that and we look into the future a lot, and there's some conflicting signals here. So this is the beyond day 16 thread uh, over here, different indicators as they call it. And I'll show you this, it's got a good point to it. The sea surface temperatures, sal, sea level pressure, shear, all these different indicators, and beyond the day 16 models. And this goes back to the 30th September, different people saying different things, what could be coming. And I found it interesting, we'll go down to the end here, just page down that there's a few people that are kind of throwing in the towel. And I can see that, you know, that oh, it looks like it's ending for the CONUS, the lower 48. All the ensembles that used to show activity are now silent, etc., and so forth and so on. Yes, it's probably close to being over, but we know that the door is not closed just yet. So I looked at some things that prompted me to check a few things again. And the MJO will come out of the null phase Amplify it through the maritime continent into the Westpac, probably get some typhoon development in this time frame. This goes out until beyond mid month. Then the ensembles begin to show us what's coming. And I'll just kind of extrapolate it out there. We'll color it in with some orange for you. It starts to head, the MJO does, eventually more of these members here into phase eight. And that should spill over eventually towards the end of the month into phase one. And so we have to watch out because water temperatures, while they have cooled off a little bit, especially in the north, starting to pull away that 26 Celsius isotherm, very important, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, it's still warm enough across 95%, just eyeballing it here, probably more than that, of the Gulf of Mexico. And this is just looking at the Gulf. Slide me back over to the corner if we can. Even the southeast coast, you know, we remember Sandy was near uh, just a few days before Halloween, for goodness sakes, 10 years ago. It's just we're not there yet. There's definitely some optimism, and that's good. You know, hope and optimism can be good things. But we don't want to just say it's absolutely over because we don't know yet. And with that MJO gradually swinging around, maybe more favorable towards the end of the month, 
we still have to keep at least one eye on what's going on out there um, but we're almost there I do want to paint good news when I can all right so you know there you go and then finally yes the water temperatures are still running above the long-term average through this region the main development region and the far north Atlantic got the La Nina over here and that typically argues for a busy Caribbean in October and even into November I remember early November 2001 Michelle came through something like that and um, you just never know Mitch in 1998 is another good example of a late October and then of course before Ian there was the infamous and not forgotten but certainly Ian will overshadow it and that would be Wilma late October the 24th of 2005 I was there for that um, story for another day all right so there you go. That's a look at things happening in the tropics. And 91L, of course, will be our big focus, and rightfully so, as it tracks through the Caribbean. Don't forget, on the YouTubes there, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Help us grow what we're doing. And um, it's good. It's great. It gets the word out, and I get to hear from more people. And we just grow this community each and every day. But I need your help to do it. All right, there you go. I'm done. Let's get this online for you. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Sutta for Hurricane Track. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow morning.